Did you know there are over 30 million evangelical Christians in the United States that do not vote? We are million voices and our heart is to change that. So joining us today, we have Lathan Watts from the great Lone Star State of Texas. Lathan, <laughs> welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all for having me. Now, Lathan is representing First Liberty Institute. Uh, Lathan, can you tell us a little bit about First Liberty Institute? Uh, certainly. Uh, once again, thank you for having me. Uh, First Liberty Institute is a nonprofit uh, law firm and think tank. Uh, we practice exclusively in the area of defending religious liberty. Our mission is to restore and protect uh, religious liberty for all Americans of all faiths. Um, we are uh, headquartered here in, in Texas. We have a small office in D.C. as well, but we handle cases all over the country. Okay, so you're purely devoted to defending religious liberty. Why? What in the world is the big deal with defending religious liberty in the United States? Um, it's really about protecting the proper role of religion in a free and civil society. Uh, that's what the First Amendment is, is all about. Um, the founders knew this, that you cannot truly have freedom without morality. And in a civil society, uh, the role of religion is really the the teaching of, um, and it's where a uh, society finds its common morality. That if you if you have freedom but no morality, uh, everyone is just free to do what's right in his own eyes, and that will inevitably lead back to the strong oppressing the weak, um, which goes from freedom back to tyranny. Um, it is the the role of religion and the 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 idea that uh, the rights of men uh, are come from their creator uh, is one of the things that differentiated the American Revolution from the revolution in France. And we, we saw what happened with the revolution in France. Um, inevitably, it sort of turned on itself. And what it led to was people cried out for, you know, we need a strong leader to come in and, and fix all this. And then you have Napoleon, you haven't, you're back to another dictator, even after they had gotten written of their king. So religious liberty um, is about protecting the proper role of religion in a free society. And for people who aren't particularly religious, they should still care about it because Thomas Jefferson, when he referred to religious liberty, he taught, he called it the right of conscience. And so for people of faith, that conscience is informed by their religion. But for people who aren't particularly religious, they still have a set of ideas that they want to live their life by. And once government invades that space, there's literally no limit to what government can do. So would you say that like all of our rights are derived from that First Amendment right of the freedom of religion? I think that freedom of religion is first in the Bill of Rights for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I would say that they're that the other rights are derived from it, but they are inextricably linked to it. Because as I said before, if you allow government to invade the space between a man and his God, and force him to violate his own conscience, force him to do something that in his mind and his heart endangers his immortal soul. Well, then what limit is there? If a government can do that, are they gonna think twice about taking your guns away, Second Amendment, uh, or searching you without a warrant, the Fourth Amendment, uh, forcing you, you know, taking life, liberty, or property without due process, the Fifth Amendment. I mean, just pick your favorite of the Bill of Rights. If you lose the first one, uh, there's nothing to stop the rest of them from going. Okay, so quickly speak to Christians that say, I'm just not political. Um, before I came to First Liberty, I spent a lot of my career uh, in and around the political process. And I can tell you from firsthand experience in the political process, if you are not at the table, you are on the menu. Um, it is as simple as that. Um, so you may not be interested in politics, but politics is interested in you. Um, you have a, a right to... Uh, Pay a, play a part in the process of selecting who will govern you. And there are people all over the world still to this day uh, who would give anything to have that. And so, uh, you know, it's not something that we should take for granted. Um, and we have a, a duty and an obligation um, to play a part in it. Uh, what that part is, it can be as simple as being an informed voter. Not everybody's going to run for office. Not everybody's going to work in, in politics or policy or, or uh, the think tank world or the nonprofit world. But at the very least, um, you, can be, you can be an informed voter and make the best decision that you can. 
Wow. So well said. So at First Liberty, you guys work on several different cases. Obvious, obviously, tons, maybe hundreds, probably thousands of different cases. What is, <laughs> what is, uh, you know, one of the most important cases that you're currently working on uh, today? Maybe kind of shed some light on some things that you face um, in the courts. Sure. Um, I would say, I mean, we've been very, very busy during this uh, pandemic, uh, oh, holding. Bet reminding mayors and county judges and even governors that yes they do have a duty to to protect public health and safety but their primary responsibility is to protect the rights of the people and so they have to balance those two you can't treat religion differently than uh, other organizations but prior to that and even still uh, now i think probably our most important case currently uh, is we represent uh, coach joe kennedy in the bremerton uh, washington area he's a was a high school football coach who was fired for taking a knee after football games on the 50 yard line and saying a quick silent prayer of thanks to God for the opportunity to coach. Wow. Um, so it, it's important because it demonstrates really uh, an imbalance in the two clauses of uh, the first amendment that deal with religion. So you have you know, Congress will make no law respecting the establishment of religion. There's the establishment clause or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, the free exercise clause. Um, government has gone so far out of its way and sometimes uses the establishment clause as an excuse. Um, they've gone so far out of their way trying not to violate the establishment clause that they end up violating the free exercise clause. Okay. Um, so that case is gonna be very important. Um, and I won't get too far down in the legal weeds here, but we, we really had to bring his case to the Supreme Court as a free speech issue because there are uh, old decisions by the Supreme Court that make free exercise cases very difficult uh, to win. It's, it's, it's almost made the free exercise clause dormant. Hmm. But his case, should it come back to the Supreme Court, would give the court the opportunity to fix that, to go back and say, yeah, we got it wrong on, on that old case. And um, so it's extremely important, as I said, for um, – for the first for the first amendment jurisprudence not just for coach kennedy but for anybody um, who works in public schools who works for government yeah. you know anywhere um that you have the right to live according to your beliefs you don't shed that right when you walk onto a public school campus or into you know uh, a government job um this is about his individual uh, uh free exercise rights and his that prayer you know is his speech it's not the government's speech well wow. Wow. So while you guys are defending him so well, which, by the way, thanks for what yeah, you do. That's you. so important. I know it sets a precedent, period. It's not just him in his location. That's trying to set a precedent in our country. So while you guys are doing that and doing it so well, what should the common uh, Christian American be doing? How could they support? What could they be doing to help this cause? Well, I would say you, you have the right uh, to live according to your beliefs. And when people of faith um, live according to their beliefs, life for everyone gets better. Uh, like I said at the very beginning, that is that is the proper role of religion in a free society. And so people of faith need to understand what their rights are. You can't protect your rights if you don't know what they are. Um, you don't have to be a lawyer. You don't have to be a constitutional scholar. Um, we have a lot of resources available for free on our website. Um, you, know, you can follow our cases and, and learn about what's going on all over the country in this area. But uh, people of all faiths, uh, they have a right to live according to those beliefs. And if doing so, you know, land yourself in trouble, then that's why people like us are around. Um, you know, you can contact us and we'll be happy to help you. And as a nonprofit, we never bill our clients. Uh, wow. No one that we represent ever gets a bill for the service. Wow. So did you just say live our best lives and that would be helpful? Live according to your faith. Yeah. You know, awesome. um, it's for me as a Christian, you know, the, the, the New Testament is replete with examples. Paul multiple times used his Roman citizenship to advance the cause. Christ himself give to Caesar what is Caesar and to God what is God. But for me, it is it's a stewardship issue. Uh, the parable of the talents tells us that we will be held accountable for what we did with the blessings God gave us. And we are blessed to live in the freest country in the history of the world. That's true. Um, those people, you know, Peter and, you know, said, fear God, honor the king. The king he was telling them to honor was killing them. Yeah. yeah. Those, those Christians were marched into the Colosseum and killed for sport for the entertainment of others. 
Do you think that they would appreciate the, the opportunity to have a say in who governed them? Wow. Um, yeah. We're going to meet those Christians one day. More importantly, we're going to meet the God that gave us these rights, and we're going to have to say what we did with it. What a perspective. So well said. <laughs> so wow. beautiful. So just a couple minutes left, Lathan. Speak directly to our viewers. Why should Christians be involved in politics? Um, as I said, it, for me personally as a Christian, it is a stewardship issue. It is um, what are you doing with the blessings God gave you? The good news is the gospel of, of, of Christ cannot be stopped by any form of government. Yeah, um, if that right. was the case, China would not be one of the fastest growing Christian populations in the world. Um, yeah. But if we lose freedom here, there's nowhere left to go. The, and if you lose religious freedom, as we talked about before, it is just a domino effect for the rest of, of the freedoms, uh, for civil and political liberty, um, because it is the foundation foundation upon every on which everything else is built so um you know, for people of all faiths and at first liberty we represent people of all faiths uh, because that's what the first amendment is about um people of all faiths have the right to live according to that faith uh in all aspects of their life it is not just about getting to choose where you go to church on sunday or saturday or whatever it may be it is about living according to that in every aspect of your life in how you run your business and how you raise your children uh, at school all aspects of your life. And if we don't take advantage of that, um, it becomes harder and harder to protect. So um, that's, that's why, you know, as, as we said, the founders placed it first uh, for a reason. That's beautiful. Okay. I hear that statement all of the time and love this statement, but I would like to share with our viewers, what does that mean uh, that the United States, if we lose freedom here, there is no place else to go. What does that mean? We are, we are and have been since our revolution, the beacon of freedom in this world. Um, it is, we are still the freest country in this world. There is no country um, founded on the same ideals that we are founded on. Uh, there is no country that has the level of uh, civil, political, religious freedom that we have here. Um, so there, therefore, there's nowhere left to turn. Uh, that, that's why it must be defended here. Wow. Visit millionvoices.org today for more resources. We will be posting more videos just like this from thought leaders across the nation. Each of the videos connects to one of our 10 guiding truths. And today we talked about freedom. Please go to millionvoices.org and click on guiding truths and get more content that matters to you. Also, visit us at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Share these videos with your friends and family, and remember, your, your voice, voice matters. matters.